Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the three best growth stocks to buy in the month of October, and then we're also going to talk about the three best dividend stocks to buy during the month of October. And these particular stocks and companies will add stability to your portfolio and prevent you from losing money during a stock market crash or stock market pullback, and it's also going to grow your overall portfolio during a bull market or a rally. So if you want more videos like this one on the best stocks to buy on the stock market remember to go and smash that like button right now comment your thoughts down below about what companies you are buying right now to hedge your bets against the current negative macroeconomic environment subscribe for more videos just like this one and without further ado let's just jump right into today's story so the first growth stock that we are going to be talking about today is Eli Lilly ticker symbol LLY which currently trades for $327.11 while professionals actually believe the company should be trading at around $335 over the next 12 months. On top of pretty decent growth, we also see that they offer a very strong dividend of 1.16, which is very good for a growth company. Now, clearly, when we talk about our dividend stocks in our next segment, those are clearly going to be very high dividend yielding companies. But right now, we're focusing on growth companies. So the dividend yield for these companies aren't going to be very high because we want to focus on that stock price appreciation as you can see from the chart on screen. So if you didn't know, Eli Lilly is basically a giant healthcare company that's currently trading at around 50 times their earnings, which could mean that they are quite expensive right now. However, earnings don't always reflect the long-term growth potential of the company, and this is what I mean by that. Although Eli Lilly, yes, is technically trading at a premium of 50 times their earnings, in this particular particular case, it means that investors are confident that Eli Lilly will continuously grow and eventually catch up to their earnings multiple. And that's going to be reflected in their long-term growth and earnings potential due to their stock price appreciation. Not to mention, the company currently has a pipeline of 20 new drugs or pharmaceuticals that are going to be coming to market, and one of them is a very impressive diabetes medicine, which could generate an incredible 20 billion dollars worth of annual revenue for this particular company. And the reason why that's absolutely astounding is because in 2021, Eli Lilly's total revenue from all of their products was around $28 billion. So literally, the company could double their revenue output just from this one drug in their pipeline. And remember, they have 19 other drugs in their pipeline, which will add revenue to them, which are currently in late stage trials. So clearly, Eli Lilly is going to be a very solid growth investment over the long term if you feel comfortable investing right now. So again, Eli Lilly is a very good stock to buy in my opinion. However, you could always wait for this company to cool off a little bit more because again, they are trading at a premium. The next company we're going to be diving into is Shopify, ticker symbol SHOP, which currently trades for $25.64 per share. But analysts believe the company is currently currently undervalued right now because it should be trading at anywhere between $26 and $81 over the next year. This company, unlike Eli Lilly, does not offer a dividend because this is more of an early stage growth company that has pulled back very dramatically in their overall stock price. So let's talk about why that is. Shopify, if you didn't know, is one of the largest e-commerce company and they have an incredible ability to scale their overall business. It allows anyone, essentially, to become a merchant and sell goods and services to other people across the entire globe. And because of this very innovative idea, the sales of this company have been growing very impressively so far by around 16% year over year, which is not bad. But just a year earlier, the growth rate of the company was around 57%. Now, clearly, the reason why this growth rate has dropped from 57% down to 16% is due to negative macroeconomic and global conditions that we are facing right now. This is why investors want to have very good companies in their portfolio to stabilize their overall portfolio, which will prevent them from downside risk of losing money, but at the same time will give them a good stock price appreciation like growth stocks will, or consistent 
passive income in the form of dividends, which we will talk about in the next segment of this video. The Shopify stock price has actually fallen around 80% year to date, which is absolutely insane, which just reflects the very bearish outlook of the overall economy right now, which is really impacting and affecting overall technology and growth companies. However, with that being said, the e-commerce segment of the overall market still promises very strong growth prospects because it's anticipated to grow by around a 14.7% CAGR or compounding annual growth rate from now until 2027 and that is phenomenal news for a company like Shopify. Now the good thing and the bad thing about Shopify is is if you are a short-term investor which means you're only looking out five years from now that's the short term and this company might not make you good returns over the next five years but buying the company now and holding for the next 10 years this this could be a huge long-term buying opportunity that could cause short-term investors to miss out on the overall macro view of this particular stock. So over the next five years, maybe the company will trade sideways and not appreciate that much in price, but over the next 10 years, this company is supposed to be a long-term winner due to the awesome compounding annual growth rate of the segment and space that they are in, which is e-commerce. So that's definitely a company to at least put on a watch list, just wait it out for for the next few years and see how you're feeling about it. But then our last growth company that we're gonna talk about is a phenomenal growth company, very similar in terms of their growth prospects to Eli Lilly, and that is going to be Costco Wholesale Corporation, ticker symbol C-O-S-T, ticker name Cost. This stock trades for $471.62, while professionals and experts believe the company should be worth anywhere between $455 and $678 over the next 12 months which the stock price does fall between this range, which means that it is fairly priced according to stock experts. And this company also offers a decent dividend yield of 0.72, which is very admirable for a growth stock such as Costco. Costco is a wholesaler and a big box retailer, and it has solid growth prospects, and it's actually shown investors their solid growth prospects over the last few years by delivering fantastic growth numbers in terms of their overall revenue. Revenues. Also, I want to say that Costco is a very stable growth company, and what do I mean by that? It means during times of uncertainty while the stock market is falling, this company will actually help you solidify and lose less money than if you were to invest into other companies. So here's an example. Over the last nine months, Costco has only lost around 16% of its stock value versus the S&P 500, which has lost around 23% of its overall value in that same time. Time frame. So clearly, Costco is going to solidify your gains and prevent you from losing money unnecessarily, and it also has great growth prospects that are in line with the S&P 500 in many cases. I also want to say that Costco reported net sales of $222.7 billion for the fiscal year ended August 28th, and that is going to be an impressive 16% year-over-year growth, and that is very impressive. Why? Because normally, due to the law of large numbers, growing their overall revenues at over a 10% CAGR is very difficult for larger companies. And Costco did this by 16% year over year, growing their overall revenues by billions of dollars. I also want to say that Costco is one of the safest places and investments to make right now due to its cheaper price to earnings ratio and multiple than say Eli Lilly because it's only coming in at around a 40. However, a 40 is still pretty high. So clearly this is still a company that is trading at a premium. So I want to make you aware of that. But given this business's overall stability and growth, this is going to offset inflation risks for investors by investing into this company, which to me is definitely worth the premium that you are going to be paying by investing into this stock. Also, I want to say that the only reason why Costco stock is falling mainly is due to the bearish outlook of the overall economy, much like the other companies that we talked about on this list. And this means that Costco remains one of the better buying opportunities on the stock market right now, particularly for long-term growth investors. So for our top three growth stocks to buy in the month of October, we have Shopify, Costco, and of course, Eli Lilly. And with that being said, let's move over to the three best 
best dividend stocks to buy during the month of October. And we're going to start off with Pfizer, ticker symbol PFE. The current share price for this company trades at $41.91, while stock professionals believe the company should be worth anywhere between $44 and $75 over the next year. This could indicate that the current stock price is somewhat undervalued because it is not trading between this price target range. Pfizer also has a strong dividend yield, giving investors a 3.76 dividend yield, which is pretty strong, particularly for a company such as Pfizer. If you didn't know, Pfizer is a giant pharmaceutical company that has currently lost around 26% of its value this year due to negative macroeconomic concerns. Pfizer was extremely popular because of their COVID-19 vaccine and the company's ability to adapt to changing conditions. Now, my personal problem with Pfizer is that I believe a lot of the revenues that Pfizer has gained from their COVID-related vaccine and their COVID-related revenue is going to disappear once everyone is vaccinated. And I know that there are boosters and things that people will continuously get, but it's not going to be on par with that original giant leap in revenue that Pfizer experienced when this was very hot. So I think Pfizer is actually going to cool off over the next few years, in my personal opinion, if they can't keep up with this particular demand. And it's because their overall COVID-related revenues are going to start falling off the radar. And we can already see the stock price somewhat trending downward. The only good thing I can swing from this is as the stock price falls, their dividend yield is actually going to increase. Pfizer has a pretty low earnings earnings multiple compared to the other growth stocks that we talked about, and they have also been acquiring multiple companies over the last few years to further diversify its future revenue sources, which I think is very smart. The company currently has around $33.3 billion worth of cash and or cash equivalents on hand, which is reflected very promisingly on their balance sheet. So clearly they have a lot of money to acquire other companies or pay off any sort of debt and they can also offer very solid dividend yields to their investors, which they have been doing. Currently, their current dividend is more than twice that of the S&P 500, with a strong payout ratio of 31%, and the company has also increased their dividend by 25% recently. So overall, a pretty strong dividend-yielding company. The next company we're going to take a look at is Suncor, ticker symbol SU, and this is going to be referring to Suncor Energy, Inc. The current share price for the company trades at $31.45, while professionals and experts believe the company should be trading anywhere between $33 and $47. So again, we could say that the company is trading at somewhat of a discount right now, according to professional price predictions and price targets. They also offer a very good yield, in my opinion, of 4.26 in terms of their dividend yield. Suncor Energy clearly is an energy company that is located over in Canada because they are a Canadian oil company. Recently, the shares of this particular company have soared by around 21% since the start of 2022, and it's made many investors very bullish on this particular company. And the reason why we've seen an increase in the share price for this particular company is that as oil and gas prices increase, this actually allows companies such as Suncor Energy to make more revenue and therefore more earnings, and it reflects very positively on their overall books and financial metrics, which has caused investors to flood into this company due to higher oil and gas prices because now these companies are making more money because they are charging more for their product even though the demand has either stayed the same or their demand has also increased. Now, for investors who are looking for a good hedge against inflation, this could be a good company to buy because as the prices, like we said earlier, of oil and natural gas products go up, this company is going to be an excellent buy because their financial metrics are just going to continuously explode because of that. However, for me personally, I do like the dividend yield on this company. It's very high at around 4.26, but I do believe that there are other companies that offer a more competitive advantage over Suncor. So please keep an eye out for that. And then finally, our last dividend company to buy right now is going to be Verizon Communications Inc., ticker symbol VZ, which offers their investors a passive income dividend yield of 6.95. The current stock price, again, is only $36.09, which could indicate that the company is undervalued from a price target standpoint among analysts, which currently 
personally think the company should be trading in a range between $40 on the low end and $69 on the high end. Verizon Communications is one of the highest yielding stocks in this current environment that also offers good upside in terms of stock price appreciation. However, despite that, the stock has crashed by around 25% this year. Its dividend payout is currently 51%, which isn't terribly high given the stock's seemingly astronomical yield, but overall it does give investors a very strong dividend yield while it's increasing their overall revenues between 8.5% and 9.5%. Remember, when we were talking about the growth companies, if a larger company is growing their revenues by at or around a 10% CAGR, just like Verizon is doing, that's exactly what we should be anticipating from companies companies like these on top of a very strong dividend yield. So again, Verizon is pretty good. The company also has a price to earnings ratio of around an eight, which is extremely cheap if we compare it to the S&P 500 average PE ratio, which currently trades at around 18 times their trailing profit. So again, Verizon could be a good investment opportunity right now, particularly because of its strong dividend and its future growth projections. And then lastly, for Verizon, I do want to add that they have signed recently a $1.58 billion contract with the Department of State to modernize U.S. embassies. And that is a gigantic contract, which I'm very glad to see went to Verizon. But despite this relatively good news, the stock price has done nothing lately but fall. It's literally trading at a five-year discount. So always remember to make sure to do your own research on all six of these companies. Comment your favorite company that you are investing in down below. Remember to go and smash that like button for more more videos just like this one and as always I will see you in the next YT video.